from spring warmth back to winter and snow. We are timing out the first flakes and changes to the accumulation map coming up. And public safety concerns mounting in the capital city where the community is speaking out after a deadly shooting over the weekend. We'll hear their message and how they're coming together to create change. Demonstrators at the Capitol today demanding lawmakers call for a ceasefire in Gaza. It's in the wake of an especially bloody airstrike. We'll hear their message and learn how some in the crowd were personally affected. Fox 61 Connecticut's news station begins with a weather watch alert. And we do begin tonight on a weather watch alert as a major winter storm is making its way to Connecticut. That nor'easter expected to dump wet and heavy snow all across the state. Thanks for joining us here for the news at 10. I'm Brent Hart and I'm Sarah Sanchez. Today started off in the 50s, but by this time tomorrow, many of us are still going to be shoveling out of all of the snow. Yeah, Connecticut's news station has team coverage tonight. Fox 61's Jake Garcia is down in New Haven, where people are bracing for what could be the most accumulation they've seen down there in years, uh, but we begin tonight with Chief Meteorologist Rachel Frank. Rachel, you've been pouring over the models all day long. How much snow are we talking about here? We have lowered the amounts a little bit, but we are still talking about quite a bit of heavy wet snow, especially in southern Connecticut. And this is one of those storms where the shoreline could actually get more than the northwest hills. And we have seen a pretty sizable shift south in this storm over the last 24 hours or so. Normally, we're talking about how crazy the models are three days out, four days out. They're going back and forth. Um, but this one, just over the last day or so, has us really pulling our hair out. So I appreciate your patience with us as we try to figure things out. Increasing clouds out there. The snow will start to fill in as we head towards daybreak. So after 2 through about 6 a.m. The heaviest, though, is going to take place right during the time of the morning commute. So that's why we're still concerned about road issues from 7 o'clock in the morning through about 1 p.m. There could be some 1 inch per hour snowfall rates, and that can be tough for road crews to keep up with, but as quickly as it starts, it's already coming to an end between around 1 to 3 p.m. So we're already seeing some school closures coming in and we are talking about that heavy wet snow. Here it is moving in. This is 4 a.m. Stopping the clock at 9 a.m. with some of those heavier snow bands and then it is out of here. We might even see the sun set before it goes down tomorrow night. So we have brought the heaviest snowfall down. We've also brought it a little bit lower as well. So about two to five in the Hartford area, but still five to as much as nine inches possible in areas that are south of I-84. We'll take a closer look at this, some of the challenges that we face and what happens after the storm. Your full forecast coming up. Thank you, Rachel. As you saw in Rachel's forecast, the shoreline will be getting the brunt of it. Yeah, they're expected to get more snow than initially anticipated. That left a lot of people scrambling to get supplies. Fox 61's Jake Garcia is live in New Haven now with more on last second preparations there. Jake. Well, Britain, Sarah, while there may not be any snow falling uh, just yet, and with many school districts across the state already announcing closures for tomorrow, Connecticut is preparing for what's to come. Actually, I'm not trying not to think about it. It's just crazy. You know, we were just in shorts and t-shirts and sweatshirts like two or three days ago. This is nuts. Connecticut has seen less snow than in winters past, but Tuesday's impending storm looks to make a dent in the snow deficit, and that has people preparing. So my snow shovel is near my stairs and my my uh, ice melt is there, you know. Agencies across the state are making sure they're ready for the storm. The Department of Transportation crews are ready to hit the road before the first flurries are expected to fall. We're not calling in our plow drivers until we have to. So that's going to be um, maybe when most of us are sleeping tonight, given the time of the storm. More than 600 crews will be working during the storm to keep the roads clear. State officials asking people to stay off the roads, if at all possible, to give them plenty of space. So if people are able to uh, work from home or delay travel uh, outside of the rush hour on Tuesday, that would be incredibly helpful. But we certainly know that not everyone has that privilege. So if people are out and they need to be out, please, please give yourself extra time. It's not going to be uh, an easy commute by any means tomorrow. The city of New Haven, among many around the state, issuing a citywide parking ban to get the streets clear. We don't want people to get towed and we want our plows to get through. If you park on the odd side of the street after midnight tonight, you may get towed, so please, please move your cars. Other means of transportation also being affected by the approaching storm. 
Tweed New Haven Airport, Avello flights in and out of Tweed New Haven Airport tomorrow are all canceled. Avello rescheduling those flights for Wednesday. Bradley Airport is asking customers to check in with their carrier tomorrow in case of changes to their flight. As residents ready their shovels and salt, they're looking forward to a warm stretch of weather ahead. You know, luckily the warm weather's coming, so hopefully it'll melt it. But who knows? I hear it's heavy snow, heavy wet snow. So I don't know. We'll see what happens. So if you do have to get out tomorrow, make sure you give yourself plenty of time to get to your destination. And if you're traveling by bus or train, experts recommend that you sign up for alerts with those providers so you can stay up to date on any delays or cancellations. Reporting live in New Haven, Jake Garcia, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Thank you, Jake. This is a live look at I-95 North near exit 46 in New Haven. Still no snow to speak of, but as we approach the morning hours, you'll see less and less tandem and empty tractor trailers on the road. Governor Lamont has banned them from Connecticut highways starting at midnight. That ban will go until the storm clears. The same ban is in effect in neighboring New York and Massachusetts. And as we've seen with this nor'easter, storm tracks can change in just a flash. Stick with Connecticut's news station on air online. And on the free Fox 61 News app, we'll have hour-by-hour -hour radar reported closings and, of course, the snow totals when it began. Well, new tonight, a North Haven teenager faces assault charges after a 14-year-old was dragged by a car and seriously injured. Police responded to that girl's home yesterday. She told officers that she sustained those injuries when she was dragged by the car. Police are not revealing tonight exactly what she said happened, but they did release a 15-year-old boy. He faces multiple assault charges and an outstanding arrest warrant for stealing a car. A Bloomfield man has been arrested in Bridgeport. He's facing a litany of charges. Police say he fired his illegal gun multiple times in a residential area. 20-year-old Trevor McCormick is accused of firing shots near the Charles Green Homes housing community last Tuesday. The picture you see on your screen right now is what police say they found in his car when they pulled him over. No one was hit by the shots. McCormick is being held on $75,000 bond. One person was killed in a serious crash this morning in Cheshire involving an SUV and a school bus. This happened around 6 a.m. in the area of Stony Hill Road and Highland Avenue. Police say the driver of the SUV, Casey Kennedy, died in the accident. No students were on the bus at the time of the crash, and the bus driver was not injured. Police say Kennedy was driving northbound and crossed over the double yellow line. The bus was traveling in the oncoming lane and tried to swerve but it was too late to avoid the crash. Police are still investigating. Well, to another developing story tonight out of the capital city, faith-based leaders in Hartford coming together after two people were shot and killed at an after-hours party over the weekend. The victim has been identified as 28-year-old Akeem Williams. The, su the suspect is dead. He's identified as 36-year-old Adrian Easterling. Both were from Hartford. Police say someone in the home stepped in shooting and killing Easterling. Fox 61's Julia LeBlanc spoke with a man who says he pulled that trigger, and she joins us now from Hartford with what he had to say in the message for community advocates. So I just see him shot somebody right in front of my eye. This man, who didn't want to share his name, says on Saturday morning, just before 5 a.m., an after-hours party was wrapping up at his sister's home on Garden Street in Hartford. He says he was selling food out of the home when a man came in with a gun and started robbing people inside. This guy, he shot somebody, right. boom, well, same time as he take shot. the ring. The man alleges he ran into the other room, came back, and shot and killed the suspect. What was it like for you? That's scary, right? Yeah. yeah. How are you? Very scary. Hartford police officers responded shortly after and found two men dead on the scene, with another sent to the hospital with injuries. Police say the second shooter stayed there and has been cooperating with them. At this point, we believe it was in an act to prevent further uh, people from getting hit by gunfire. But the gunfire and the violence is pushing faith-based leaders on Garden Street to say enough is enough. Even while being a homeowner on Capon Street, I moved me and my son out of Hartford to Manchester to try to save his life. Giselle Jacobs has owned a home around the corner for 10 years. Two of my sons have been shot on the streets of Hartford. My 15-year-old was shot on Garden Street. Now she and other neighbors and business owners are coming together to create a 24-7 community watch group as they work to install surveillance cameras in the area. 
The fact that these house parties were allowed to go on for such a long time speaks to the inability of law enforcement and the willful disregard for law by homeowners and area residents. Now, we reached out to the city of Hartford and the director of licensing and inspection says that they have been investigating this specific property for months now for potential illegal activity happening there and unlawful use of the property. And now in light of this incident, they say they hope to work with Hartford police to discuss further legal actions. In the meantime, nobody has been charged in this case. We are in Hartford, Julia LeBlanc, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Thank you, Julia.